everyone, it's Marina with Front Yard Edibles. It is mid-August here in Vermont, which means the sumac berries are ready to harvest. Sumacs are very easy to identify and they make a yummy lemonade packed full of vitamin C. Uh, sometimes I like to throw in a little seltzer and vodka to make a cocktail I don't feel so guilty about. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to identify two different sumacs, uh, where to find them, and then we'll collect some berries and get to making some lemonade. Sumacs love bright, open, sunny spaces like roadsides, meadows, growing along forest edges. They just do great in disturbed soils. This staghorn sumac stand is loving all of the sunlight. It's very recognizable because of the clusters of bright red berries in a cone shape and the compound leaves. Very tropical looking in my opinion. And this is a close up of the staghorn sumac. Notice the fuzzy branch which its name implies staghorn sumac, it's like the velvet on a buck's antlers. It also has fuzzy berries, which is quite different from the smooth sumac growing right next to it. As you can see, the berries don't have any of that fuzz. The stem is smooth. You'll never mix these up with poison sumac because poison sumac has white berries. So don't worry about that. We're gonna go ahead and grab a few clusters. Uh, you can check to make sure that they're ripe by getting your finger wet and then rubbing it on the berries and then tasting your finger. And if you get a nice tangy lemon flavor, then they're ripe and you're good to go. These make such a delicious lemonade, you barely need any sweetener afterwards. I usually don't add anything, but if you like, you can add honey at the end and it's so good. So as you can see, the cluster on the left is fuzzier. That's the staghorn sumac. And then the cluster on the right is the smooth sumac. The staghorn sumac should be filtered with cheesecloth just to make sure that all of the little fuzzies on the berries uh, don't end up in your lemonade because sometimes they're a little bit irritating to the throat. These are the clusters that I'm gonna use for the lemonade today. They're all smooth sumac. I had noticed too late that the staghorn sumac I'd harvested had worms in them. So another thing to double check as you're harvesting cluster berries, check for ripeness and make sure that there aren't any little bugs and critters crawling around in there. All right, once you have your berry clusters picked, uh, you're just gonna plop them right into a pitcher I prefer something that has a spout on it just because it'll make it easier when it comes time to filtering. Some people like to remove the berries from the stems, uh, but I find that makes it a little bit harder as you're filtering everything. And then I am just going to pour some room temperature water over it all. You can also use ice cold water if you don't have as long to let everything steep. But I'm just using room temperature water because I'm going to let this sit for a couple of hours. The longer you let it sit, of course, the stronger the flavor will be. And the more berries you, you use in the water, of course, the stronger the flavor will be. So I'm going to let that sit for a couple of hours and then we'll check back in on it. So the sumac berries have been steeping for about five hours. Uh, I've gone ahead and removed all the larger chunks that were in here. Now all that's left to do is filter the rest through some cheesecloth, just to make sure that we've gotten rid of all the debris and any little hairs that might've been on some of the seeds. Thank you. 
And there you go, sumac lemonade. It was super easy and I hope I've inspired you to make some of your own because this drink is delicious and packed full with antioxidants. As always, please triple check your plant identifications with other trusted resources and happy foraging.